Good morning. Welcome to Terra at Home. We're here with Chris Moretti. Welcome Hello. back. Thank you. And uh, we have something so fantastic to show all of our Terra customers. How awesome is this? You can it's, have this now yourself. It's pretty awesome. Um, as a buyer, this is something I've been looking for for years for Terra. Mm -hmm. um, the concept of a living wall is something that's not really new, I think, to most people. Mm -hmm. You've probably seen them in commercial buildings, large-scale commercial mm -hmm. applications. Um, and up to this point, it's typically been a concept that's been installed professionally by landscapers, exactly. generally on a large scale. Now we've got a living wall that is essentially living wall art. It mm -hmm. comes out of the box. Um, with a few simple steps, you can plant it yourself and have something fabulous. Like that uh, is basically a vertical garden for either inside or mm -hmm. outside. Inside or outside, I love that. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is beautiful, and that's what we were talking about. You know, I was saying how, um, you, when, especially in, in regions like Vancouver where they have longer, um, you know, beautiful weather, you, you, yeah, you do see these by the waterfalls and, and just go right up, and people just stand there in awe. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't think it would be that easy to take care of, but it really is. It really is. Um, so let's like talk about this one. You just took, you literally took this one out of the box. Yeah, these so are this pieces. is how it comes in the box. It's all one piece. It's already assembled for you. Mm -hmm. um, the mounting hardware that you would need to put it on your wall, say in your house, is included it's already put on the back um, with some simple instructions as well mm -hmm. so inside we've got sort of a, a modular system here with an absorbent material that sits mm -hmm. at the back mm -hmm. so that's going to hold the water and sort of bring it through down to the entire um, area of plants in the top what you've got in your hand is a, a little reservoir that goes in the top of the frame mm -hmm. all you do to take care of this is pour you know a cup of water into that reservoir it filters down. down there's another small reservoir at the bottom so that it doesn't run all over your stuff there you go so you can put this in your living room in your kitchen hang it on the wall like a piece of art oh, and it so basically cool. takes care of itself that's the great part so if you can put it inside you know then you have it all year round obviously mm -hmm. you have the outdoor option which is great too you know you can picture having this perfect little garden and what's so great about this is when people are in smaller spaces now you can have something so beautiful in the tiniest little baby's backyard exactly so <laughs> for inside it's great um, especially throughout the winter months I know that we're not in the winter thank goodness anymore thank goodness. Um, <laughs> but for those winter months when you're stuck inside you know you've got the great benefits of indoor plants uh, improving your air quality all mm -hmm. those great things mm -hmm. for outside we've got a great option here um, with herbs already planted so like you said a lot of people are dealing with smaller and smaller spaces so growing up is a great way to take advantage of the small space you have and yep. not have pots sort of all right. over the place right exactly and, and again as you say when it becomes actually something that's functional where you know you have rosemary and you literally go just clip it off and there you go mm -hmm. that makes it even an extra kind of an extra bonus because exactly. so herbs are beautiful to look at so I, I you know I guess having this cool water filtration system the way it's that is definitely one thing people would be concerned about is care I mean am I yeah. gonna are these gonna actually live for me but but you're gonna show us how to plant one and put it all together yeah and we can talk about care as we go so okay. basically um, we've, we've got the frame already there um, for for ease of planting if you want uh, you can with a simple screwdriver take this frame off so that you're not you know dealing with the frame there okay. so the plastic stuff's just sure. there but for simplicity we're just gonna leave it how it is mm -hmm. and we're using just a regular a, a potting mix so we've got terra container soil I'm using an organic mix here um, theoretically for herbs or something if you mm -hmm. wanted an or organic mix so basically you're just gonna plant as though you're planting something into a, a pot mm -hmm. so we're just putting a little bit of, of soil there in the bottom we've got a great selection of plants here Choosing plants that are going to do well mm -hmm. is kind of paramount. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to ask you that. I have a feeling that would be quite significant. <laughs> so basically what I'm doing, um, I'm choosing a bunch of low, uh, low requirement, sort of easy care house plants. Okay. So tropical plants that are going to do well in virtually any environment. I can move this from inside to outside mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. summer months if I want. Okay. And I've gone, you'll see, with sort of a, a simple scheme of greens and whites. Okay. So. The preference is yours, you know, you can plant whatever it is that you want in your planter, but bear in mind that um, easy care plants are probably the best choice mm -hmm. because it's going to make your job that much easier. Right, okay, that, that part, so if you're doing something like this, you want it as easy as possible. <laughs> so basically, um, you want to read your plant tags, talk to the experts at Terra, mm -hmm. basically they can sort of guide you in the right way to, to show you plants that are not going to require much intervention on your part. Um, we've got herbs over on the side here, which I actually really, really like for mm -hmm. this project. I do too. Um, herbs are really versatile. 
Um, the one thing, though, is that they require a bit more light. So they're a perfect application to have outside on your patio right. okay. as opposed to inside the house. Okay. So okay. having herbs outside on the patio, um, obviously for ease of use, keep them near the barbecue. Mm -hmm. um, it's sure. a great way to soften a, a hard wall, like the wall of your house yes. Um, yes. in your patio or a fence, something like that. Mm -hmm. That's right, because a lot of times, as you're saying, a lot of people have the sort of low-lying greens, and then you get up and you, you do have those hard walls. You're like, what can I do with that? This is definitely going to just create more of an atmosphere in your backyard. It adds a nice softness. It does. So, And that's something that is a challenge for many people, where we want to sort of soften those hardscape walls, where mm -hmm. you've got maybe an, un, an unsightly backdrop to your patio. Yes, yes. Um, putting a series of these up with maybe even consider one type of plant throughout. Right. So you've got a For nice each sort one. of yep. pattern yep. on your fence. The I options agree. are virtually endless. And what I love about this too, uh, as you as you continue to plant it, there are, there are a lot of different styles. The frame itself, and we created quite a few of them. Um, so again, this is just sort of a black, sort of uh, worn wood, and then obviously it's a nice brown, but there's red, and just some, and a, a, almost a bluey, gray tinged wood, like a stain. So some uh, really, uh, really nice options uh, for whatever suits your style and, uh, and color. In the backyard. Exactly. I love that. So we're using a bit of ivy. So yeah, and that's again, as you were mentioning, if you wanted to, you could just do all ivy and that would be beautiful too. It would be lovely. As it continues to grow and fill in, it just gets more and more spectacular mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, as it continues to grow, which is lovely. So um, again, I've, I've chosen plants that are going to be really easy to take care of. Um, and in a really simple color mm -hmm. scheme, so mm -hmm. that I'm not complicating things. Right. No, I like I like how you've done this. Though this is this is really really cool. It's nice to add a bit of variation in your planting pattern. So, if you've got, to, I've only chosen four different types of plants here, and I'm just sort of kind of varying them throughout, mm -hmm. so that we've got mm -hmm. a nice disbursement of different colors and patterns and textures throughout that, uh, literally creating a bit of hanging wall art. Let's talk a little bit about uh, fertilizing them and taking care of them, making sure that they are going to keep their you know, looking fresh. Absolutely. So um, for everyday care, basically all it needs is a bit of water. Mm -hmm. So um, depending on the types of plants you use and where you have it, um, that's going to sort of vary how often you need to water. Okay. In an indoor environment, a cup of water once a week is really all you're going to need to do. Okay, it's easy. Outside on the patio in a sunny situation, probably daily. Mm -hmm. right. So it just depends on how, where you've got it placed, how much sun it's getting, and you'll get to know pretty quickly how fast your plants are drying out. Right. As far as feeding goes, super simple as well. Um, we're basically just going to use an all-purpose plant fertilizer mix. Mm -hmm. um, we've got some great options from Scott's in miracle Grow. Yeah, these are great. So any kind of water-soluble plant food is really all you're going to need. Perfect. You mix it up following the directions and put it in and that raw water reservoir and that's Look it. Look at this, she's not even done yet and how beautiful this is. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Chris. And these are available at our Terra location, so make sure you check them out. You'll definitely find one for you. And yes, you can do it too. I can do this. We'll be back with more Terra at home. where color lives. Good morning, welcome back to Tara at Home. I'm here with Ross from Free Will Cycle in uh, Dundas. And uh, thanks for letting us come into your shop. We are talking about getting a new bike. And there are so many to choose from. Obviously, this is like the first full day of summer. So everyone's kind of getting out there and uh, hoping for some good riding weather this uh, this season. So lots to think about when you come into a bike shop. First of all, mm -hmm. what you're riding, right? Where, yeah. What kind of ride do you want to do, mm -hmm. right? Okay, yeah. so say we were going for the road 
and uh, we want to do one of that road cycle. This is for like the big guys, right? That, yeah, uh, like a racer, stuff. weekend warrior yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. So tell me, what are some of the cool features on here? Uh, so you've got like the frame is carbon fiber, mm -hmm. so no expense spared. Mm -hmm. uh, super lightweight, uh, like. Yeah, these 17 like nothing, pounds, right? yeah, it feels pounds. like nothing compared to most bikes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, sort of an aggressive position, uh, very aerodynamic, uh, thin, high pressure tires uh, yeah, for low rolling resistance. Wow. Um, yeah, and super stiff when you're pedaling, it just feels like every ounce of energy is just going mm -hmm. right into your forward and this motion. is the, and when at this time of year when we have a lot of really great trails around our region which is mm -hmm. nice and uh, for you know we'll get to the trail riding side of things but the roads that we have as well people like to head out to the countries and get some of those uh, those windy roads and the hills and yeah. all that through especially coming out of Dundas right there are lots yeah, of places it's, to ride. it's a beautiful area yeah. here to ride just yeah. getting out into Flamborough uh -huh. and uh, out in Castor Way yeah you can exactly. just go into the country and spend hours and hours so this is for more up and down the hills. The escarpment yeah. makes for great, uh, exactly. great climbing. So lots of questions for people, you know, and come in and talk to you guys about uh, this. If you're trying to get in, make the shift as this is your kind of your new thing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, because these bikes can get very expensive too, can't they? Yeah, but there's there's entry level bikes too. There's okay. bikes for everyone. So. See, oh, he, he knows. <laughs> he knows. He's a, he's a built guy. Okay, so now let's talk about this one. So what's this one? Uh, this is sort of a typical city bike that mm -hmm. we carry, um, and it also would make a great commuter. Uh, you've got fenders uh, for riding in all weather, weather and mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know, but they make a big difference. Mm. Uh, just the road spray coming up, you're actually a lot drier if you've got fenders on your bike. Okay, that's you a good thing to think about. We think about fenders when we were a kid on our bikes, but yeah, they really do yeah. have a purpose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of the spray off the front wheel just soaks your shoes if you don't have uh, fenders on your bike. And a lot of people so nowadays great. are riding their bikes to work, especially I mean the, few, yeah. the, the you know the short season that we do have, people like to get out on their bike if they're within riding distance from work, mm -hmm. why not? But of course you don't want to be covered in uh, mud and water yeah. when you get, yeah. <laughs> get to the office. If it is that sort of day. Exactly, yeah. if it is that sort of day. Um, so this is good though, and, and again it comes you've with... Got a, comes with a rack, yeah. uh, so you can fit bags uh, on top of the rack or on the sides. Uh -huh. uh, it's got a pants guard. Uh, on the chain, so oh, you can you don't have to deal with the straps or rolling yeah, up your pant leg your pan or anything like that cool. on this bike. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, good, this is a good stable bike yeah, for you. Good sweat solid. back bars, mm -hmm. uh, sort of an upright riding position. Okay. Yeah. It's Very good. Bike. Yeah. All right, I like that. Okay. And this guy. Yeah. So we've got sort of a, a mountain bike here. Uh, Dundas is a great area for this sort of thing. There's lots yeah. of trails in the woods and stuff. Uh, so you've got suspension, uh, hydraulic disc brakes, sort of. So that's Typical. an impact, right? That's going to give you just a little give when yeah, you're... Yeah, the suspension is going to soak up the bumps in the front. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, this frame is carbon fiber, sort of like the road bike that you've seen. It's a higher-end so mountain still, bike. So it's still, it's um, still, yeah, it's a beautiful bike. So you, yeah. it's still light, even though it's a mountain still bike. Still really There's light, association yeah. around the old light mountain bikes years ago. Where really like, heavy oh, and clunky, solid yeah. Solid yeah. heaviness, right? But you don't need that now. It doesn't yeah. have to be that no, just because it it's be a bulkier like bike. And the carbon fiber, I mean, it is super stiff mm -hmm. and uh, super light, but it also just soaks up bumps really well. So again, well. that's beneficial. And, and of course uh, the tires are... Fat tires, mm -hmm. loads of grip, um, a larger wheel size than the older mountain bikes. Mm -hmm. This is a 29 inch mountain bike. Okay. Uh, and the larger wheels have a little bit more give. So it makes the rear suspension kind of unnecessary unless you're doing more s heavier, like heavier, serious, trip, stuff. serious stuff. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's a great bike. That's fun, and that's and that's fun for people because you can become more and more and more adventurous as you go along yeah. when it comes to choosing your trails, right? And I mean, you can, and something that you know the whole family can do. Yep. Um, you just okay. have to kind of pick and choose, uh, you know, the of course the <laughs> level, right? Okay. And uh, so this one, this is, is this a hybrid. Yeah. So okay. this is sort of a they call it a fitness hybrid. Okay. Uh, so it's closer to a road bike than a mountain bike. It does mm -hmm. have sort of flat handlebars in a more upright position, uh, but it's still meant to be fast and efficient on the road. Okay. Um, the tires are a little bit wider, so it's a little bit smoother. Mm -hmm. uh, you could take this on like the rail trail or something like that. So that's that. the interesting part. So you could take it on trails to an extent, yeah. but again, it's also fine on a road. It's also those. great on the road, yeah. And okay. it is uh, fully equipped to take things like fenders and racks if you wanted to commute Oh, really? You so can add fenders the, to this? Yeah, so it's got all the mounts on it. Yeah. Oh, that's actually really interesting. This is good. So this is actually a good all-around bike for people. So again, this could be yeah, a, a possible commuter bike for people if they wanted to. There's some of our best sellers are this I could see bike, that. especially in this area. With the versatility, yeah. right? Yeah. That just makes sense. Okay, and then now we go down to uh, a child's bike. Yeah. Which so you have, like, the smallest little baby ones up yeah. to... Yeah, so we start all the way down um, with sort of the, the push bikes that mm -hmm. don't have any pedals, mm -hmm. which is great for learning how to balance, even right. better than, say, like, training wheels or something like that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then this is sort of uh, an older kid's mountain bike. This is cool. uh, So it's sort of 
really just a scaled down version yeah. of uh, some of our other mountain bikes. And I mean, they're not super expensive, which mm -hmm. is good if it's going to be replaced. Well, like, that's the thing, uh, right? Because the kids yeah. grow like in five minutes. So. And we also, we do this just for kids' bikes. Uh, we take trade-ins. Uh, oh, so too. when they grow out of the bike, we'll take the bike back uh, and then we'll pay, we'll assess it and then pay back a certain amount and oh, then we resell yeah. them. So we also often have used kids bike for sale as well. Oh, see, that's great. And that is so good for parents to know, right? Especially yeah. if you have multiple children. I mean, you can only go through, you know, the bike and then you, you know, be able to have like, especially if you have a girl and then yeah. the boy, you don't want the boy's bike and, yeah, right? Course, yeah. So, so there's an able on the trade. And now one thing, obviously with the focus on all these bikes is having yourself a good helmet. You guys have every mm -hmm. helmet known to man that, yeah. that works all sorts of helmets, different riding. Uh, road helmets, mountain bike helmets, kids' helmets, mm -hmm. like skate style helmets, that sort of thing. Yeah, so that's yeah. good. And that's what's great, you know, nice local bike shop that uh, you know, right mm -hmm. here in Dundas, you guys have been here for a long time. Everything, service department, yep, and also classes. We were talking about there's also clinics that you can do for yep. maintenance uh, to help. You know, so you can take care of your own bike. Yep, we have mm -hmm. level one and level two maintenance courses. Mm -hmm. uh, level one is sort of the basic stuff: how to fix a flat, uh, how to adjust your gears, how to adjust your brakes, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Level two is sort of like. Uh, doing a lot of the stuff that we do in the service department, so just totally stripping everything down, yeah. uh, replacing parts, all mm -hmm. that. Yeah. I guess we should also remind people too, at this time of year, if you already have a bike that you're keeping, that um, you should do an annual maintenance. Like if you if you're not doing it yourself, bring it in and just make sure that it's okay to take out on the road again yeah. because things happen in the winter while it's just sort of you know laying dormant, Sitting right? There. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we do like uh, basic maintenance, mm -hmm. um, so that's like our. Uh, sort of the basic price package yeah. and then we do we adjust the gears adjust the brakes clean the bike up we test ride it to make sure that everything's good tighten oh, everything perfect. down make sure that it's safe to ride yeah so. and that and really that is key right because I mean I think sometimes people think it's okay to hop out there oh my tires feel fine and that there's <laughs> other things that can happen right so yeah, you want to make yeah. sure it's all ready to go and of course all the other equipment needed gloves and uh, and again the camelbacks and all that for yeah. the long rides and rain gear if rain it's that gear. Sort of oh, day, yeah, yeah. all that stuff so <laughs> perfect so basically what people do you can come in ask lots of questions and uh, find the right bike family as well you have the little uh, the little trailers like yeah we the have the chariots, the yep. chariots yeah. we even have uh, a scaled down one for dogs or cats too, <laughs> oh which is kind of fun. Get out of here. That's <laughs> awesome. My cat weighs a lot. That'd be crazy. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Ross. Yeah, it's really good. No and again, thank you to Free Wheel Cycle. We'll be back with more Tara at Home in just a bit. where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Heritage Perennials, look for us in the blue pots. Welcome back to Tara at Home. We're in our Tara Kitchen with Chef Rachel and uh, making a very yummy dish that mm -hmm. we all can't wait to try involving fresh lobster. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So, we, so have, we have him in the pot already. We do. Mm -hmm. Yep. All you do is get a big pot of water, uh, salt it, bring it to a boil, put the lobster in uh, head first and then just simmer it for yeah. about, um, about 10 minutes. Cooks quickly. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah and then obviously good. you're going to let it cool a little bit before mm -hmm. you deshell and, and get uh, the fresh meat out. Yes. Very good. Yeah, so okay. it's really easy to do that. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, let's talk about the actual pasta dish, what it is. Yeah, so we're, I'm using the orecchetti pasta, mm -hmm. okay, so it's like a little shell type pasta instead of, you know, your traditional macaroni, but right. you can use anything, penne. Mm -hmm. um, and what we're going to do is make a roux and then from there a cheese sauce. 
and we'll mix that in with the with the cooked pasta and the chunks of lobster, mm. and we'll bake it in the oven. Lobster so it'll be like cheesy a baked. pasta bake. Mm -hmm. Very good. And that, uh -huh. that I love the idea of putting it in the oven too, and creates that crusty cheese on the top. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I like a baked. Mm -hmm. I like a baked uh, a pasta good. dish. Very good. Uh, and so the pasta is already cooked. Yeah. We've already cooked that. That's easy. Um, the best way to cook your pasta is just according to the package directions. Mm -hmm. That's what. That's what. Uh, so that, you do. that's the one thing you, you want to make it just according to directions of package. Even though you are putting it in the oven to to continue to bake it, you want this cooked. Properly. You do want it cooked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be completely cooked. Right. Just be because slightly. it is going in yeah. in the oven. Okay. But for the most part. Um, especially when you're using the uh, the dry pasta, okay. you want to cook it, and uh, till about al dente. Okay. So, starting off with the sauce, we've done a, you know a roux sauce many times on the show before, mm -hmm. but you basically want to start off with butter and flour. Mm -hmm. It's good for people to know though, because a basic roux sauce is used so often mm -hmm. for so many dishes, right? Yeah. So it's the base of a lot of uh, a lot of different sauces. So usually we do uh, equal parts butter and flour. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I just do those both together. And you always cook a roux on, on a low heat. You don't want to you don't want to cook a roux too high. Okay. So we'll get this as low as we can. This is a big burner, so <laughs> it's a little it's a little hot. But I'm gonna melt the butter. And actually, before I add the flour, I normally just add the flour right in there and make a roux with the butter and the flour. But I'm gonna add in some shallots and garlic. Oh, okay. So I'll just do that um, into the butter right now. So that adding that element's not going to. Um, affect the the roux by any means. No. Okay, that's good to know. No, it will not. Okay. So those can just go to the side. Thank yeah. you. So basically, you just want to make sure all the butter is melted and and kind of get that cooking for a minute. I always say, you know, cook it for a minute or two until you can start to smell it, until the aromas come out, okay. and that's um, that's when you know it's starting to cook and you're good to continue. The one element I've noticed that you're using is also uh, beer mm -hmm. and that's again to really kind of give it that rich flavor, yes. right? It's yeah. a lot of times when you're when you're at pubs and that you'll get that all the, also tied into a lot of meals because mm -hmm. it just gives it such a nice flavor. Yeah, it does. Very good. And you can use white wine with this dish. That's sure. a really nice uh, addition too, but mm -hmm. I personally like to drink beer and I I think it goes yeah. good with this. Not that I don't like to drink wine too. Right. But <laughs> <laughs> We're not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I think it goes We're good with this dish. <laughs> yes. It's different, right? right? It gives it something a little bit different. Exactly. Okay, so we'll turn that down and then now we can add the flour. So add a little bit at a time and just mix it in. And you just want to keep adding a little bit of flour at a time until it um, kind of comes together and forms okay. a nice a nice roux. So we'll just uh, do a little bit more, and this is what's gonna ultimately, you know, make your sauce right. the consistency that you want it. Okay. Yeah, you can see it thickens up right away, doesn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty good, but I am gonna add just a little bit more, just to be sure. Okay. And uh, you can always thin it out if you if you have to after, mm -hmm. but. Okay. Okay. So that's nice. So you kind of know when it's formed when it kind of clumps together like that, mm -hmm. right? Forms a ball. Okay. And so you can just toast that for a moment, okay. and then, uh, and then comes the good part. Then we'll add the beer. All right, well, that comes in already. Okay. Yes. So I guess you want to burn off the alcohol, right? Mm hmm. Which means that I want I want a little bit of heat. So mm -hmm. I just turn it up a little bit. Okay. Okay. There we go. That looks nice. Turn it up a little bit because you want to hear that sizzle. You want it to burn off the alcohol. Perfect. There we go. And then I use a whisk for this point. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of slowly whisk it all together. And you want it to, to become smooth again. Okay. Now, of course, this isn't going to be completely smooth because we have the, um, the onions in That's there. That's right, exactly. And the garlic in there. Mm, it smells really good. So add a little bit more. Mm. Carry away with the. <laughs> with the beer. <laughs> okay, our men are like, wait, don't drink all of it. <laughs> Save some for me. <laughs> okay. So there we go. That looks good. And so you can see that it's starting to absorb it and it's forming a nice yeah, smooth sauce. Yeah, that looks sauce. good. That's the great part is, you know, a lot of times when people are making um, a type of cheese bake, like that pasta cheese bake, it really is, I mean, it's really quite straightforward to make the mm -hmm. cheese sauce, as oh, you yes. say, right? But it, it, it's, I think a lot of people think it's just so so much involved, but it's really straightforward, mm -hmm. and, and kids love it too, right? So you can make just a, you know, a version, of course, songs the beer, and yeah. uh, and make it for kids, and it's homemade, and it, mm -hmm. it's awesome. You add vegetables to it, whatever you like, yeah. right? Yeah, it really is easy. 
So then again, we're gonna add in some milk, just a little bit at a time, um, because you just wanna make sure that all the flour is uh, getting mixed in there evenly and it's not clumping. And then you can bring this mixture up to a boil. And then at that time when it's boiling, it'll thicken up a little bit. Okay. Because you're gonna be, you know, the more milk you add, the thinner it gets. Mm -hmm. it goes through a lot of stages, right? <laughs> yeah. Thick and thin. So, yep, so after you've added most of the milk, you can turn it up to a high and we'll bring this up to a boil. Add in a little bit more there. Okay, I'll just get you to put that sure. to the side if that's okay. okay. Uh, and that too. And so at this point, um, while we're waiting for it to boil, we can add in um, some seasoning. So salt, pepper. I put a little bit of cayenne in there. Cool. Good and message. you can put in um, some herbs if you want. So I'm going to put in some fresh thyme. Okay. So we'll just chop that up, salt and pepper. And then we can add in the cheese. Perfect. So that'll be the last step. That's easy. Add All in right. the cheese, mix it up, and then it'll form a nice thick cheese sauce. Okay. And then from there, what we're going to do is mix that with the pasta and the cooked we'll lobster meat. All right, yeah. so what we'll do is we'll take a quick break, we'll come back, and we'll put this all together. Can't wait. Heritage Perennials. Look for us in the blue pots. Welcome back to Terra at Home. We are piecing together our beautiful pasta bake here. A lobster has been shelled mm -hmm. and chopped up. And <coughs> we've, the cheeses, what were the cheeses that you put in the sauce? So I used a, a medium, uh, like an orange cheddar, mm -hmm. and then a four-year aged uh, white cheddar. Oh, that's good. That's going to give that depth and richness, mm -hmm. right? Then just using mild cheese. Nice yeah. combination. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, so we just mix in the cooked pasta. Mm -hmm. oh, look at that. <coughs> then the that chopped awesome. lobster. Very good. There was something about lobster in <coughs> cheesy pasta. I don't know what that is. So you put a com combine that together, mm -hmm. and um, we actually have the final product right here, which is smelling so good. And again, just that having that beer in there is a really nice. Again, that smell is just something mm -hmm. about it. We're all like loving it right yeah. now. Yeah. So yeah. So this is the finished product. As mm -hmm. you can see, I put breadcrumbs on top. So I just yep. use a um, seasoned regular breadcrumb. Right. So I like that because of the flavor that it brings with the herbs in it. And you, mm -hmm. you could uh, put in whatever herbs you have. And then I like adding panko as well. So I usually mix the two together when That's I'm using idea. any kind of breadcrumb. The panko is a uh, is a coarse breadcrumb. Right. So I'm uh, give it a little so bit of crispy. Yeah, crispiness. Like yeah, then you just bake it in the oven. How uh, long are you baking it for? 350, okay. uh, 350 degrees for about you know, 45 minutes or so till it gets, you know, nice and bubbly. And mm -hmm. as you can see, the, the Edges are crispy. Yeah, you can throw awesome. it under the broiler if you want for the last couple minutes. To, Very good. To okay, well, while you're pouring that in the dish, just a reminder that, of course, you can find all of Chef Rachel's recipes on our website, terragreenhouses.com. And, uh, and again, this is something the whole family, I think, would love. And again, you can adjust to what you need to mm -hmm. for, for the kids, but I think everybody would just thoroughly enjoy this dish. Yes. This is us. And it's, uh, it's, it again, good. it's still good. You know, spring is still kind of damp, and it's still, you're still kind of loving this stuff. You definitely wouldn't eat this in the middle of July when you're trying to squeeze into your bikini. So. Probably shouldn't. <laughs> right, but we're allowed to do it just yet, just now. Yeah. So very good. Thank you so much, Rachel. And uh, we'll be back with more Terror at Home next weekend. Hope you have yourself a good one.